I am pleased that Michael Smith will bring us to teaching this morning. I don't know Mike very much aside from the context of this worshiping community, but just from there, I know he's a very talented, giving person who brings us the music devices, brings us music, brings us songs. Uh, it's been committed to helping people have computers and learn how to use computers who otherwise would not have that opportunity. And he's a very overall loving and giving person in our community. And if you didn't pick up on it, the common theme of the scriptures was love and looking forward to your work. Yes. Oh, Lord Jesus, here we go. Okay. It's about love, guys, okay? Uh, that's, that's the power that drives me. That's the thing that saves me. That's the thing that keeps me going when I don't understand what's happening. And uh, without it, you're useless. Okay, I mean, God consists of love, so why not use God with your love? Amen. Let's get going. Um, there are four Greek, Greek words uh, that, uh, that uh, describe love, and you know, as, us as Christians, we, we gotta have to know the difference between them. The four are agape, phileo, storge, and eros. Uh, but, you know, it's necessary that we know the difference between them. So we'll start with uh, the one that's truly not mentioned in the Bible, and that's eros. That's the one where uh, sex and love and passion and, and everything, so go figure why it's not in the Bible. I mean, it, you know, those things are necessary and what have you, but um, it's, it's truly not mentioned in the Bible. So we'll go to the next one, uh, which is the, the best love of all, and that is the agape love. Uh, that type of love is truly, it's not a feeling. Uh, it's basically an action. It's something that, that you do. Uh, it's, 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 it's basically the love that you really don't want to be given, okay? It's the love where you have to struggle to, to work. Are you understanding me, Patty? You have <laughs> okay, okay. I want to make sure I uh, see see everyone and everyone sees me. Stop me. Um, the third one, uh, phileo. That is the type of love where you have like a special interest in something. Like you know, I love my car. I love French fries or hot dogs and stuff like that. That's kind of a kind of a, well kind of a useless. Love, but uh, you know, love is not not really useless. I mean, well, that you know, that type of love is the love that the world is working with now. Things and stuff, and 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 and, and, and you know, the 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 need to keep up with the Joneses, you know, by 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 obtaining things. That that's why I say that that type of love is is useless. The fourth type of love. It's a story game, and it's like the love between a brother and a sister, or a mother and a daughter. It's family love. And actually, the two types of love I can basically say that I have for this community is agape and, 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 and story game. Okay, I mean, you guys are my family. I don't have much going on in my life. But this truly is one of the most important parts of my life, is being with this community and going through the struggles that we go through. Uh, now, uh, as you guys know, I'm always telling you I love you. I'm always writing on the emails. But what's happening now is it's starting to rub out. People are starting to tell me they love me back. Okay. At first it was like, man, you yeah, good, yeah, 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 yeah whatever. Yeah. But I'm getting people to tell me they love me back. You, you, you're one of them. Okay. 
All right. Gail, you're one of them. Okay. All right. Fred, you're one of them. Okay. You're, you're all guilty. You're all guilty. Okay. Okay. Amen. Okay. All right. Lord, let's, let's, let's do this. Well, okay. I'm going to go straight to Scripture now because, you know, I guess that's enough about me. Well, I could go into some other things about how my experience with the African church kind of really changed uh, how I felt about this community. I mean, I, there was no problems with what was going on, but it was just not me. I mean, you know, I mean, I had just like, okay, a bunch of white people, it is this, with these slow, corny songs that I don't know. I love them, and I love you. But it was, wasn't me. So I ventured off into a church in Greenbelt, uh, and it was truly African, okay? It, 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 it truly was not even many African Americans there. It was an African church. And they spoke uh, Yoruba from Nigeria. Uh, it was nice in the beginning, okay. Uh, you know, that noon is so, yeah, Brother Mike, Brother Mike. But after a while, uh, I kind of got taken. I was, I was, ex I was exploited. And uh, the, the love um, kind of turned into a, uh, a uh, not a hate, but a, a a, a, a sense of being um, exploited. And no one wants to do that because y'all guys know my heart. You know I'll do anything for you, okay? And uh, they took advantage of that, okay? And uh, it's a good thing, though, because it brought me right back here. Okay, God knows what he's doing, and it's not about black and white and green and, you know, that's why I really wanted to speak on love. And actually, I kind of uh, stepped up the pace on uh, allowing you guys to know how much I love you when we start getting into that racial stuff, all right? That is an area, okay, if you, if you don't bathe it in love, it, it can wind up a mess. Everybody mad with each other, we're fighting. But at one point, when Wes and Sue was here, oh, let me tell you about them. Well, I'll be okay. <clears throat> Wes and Sue told us, go ahead and split the church. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I don't know who was in the, in the, but he said, but it may be necessary to split the church. Because we, you know, we were at that point. We were at a point where, are we going to go this way? Are we going to go that way? Are we going to call, uh, uh, you know? And they said, uh, uh, you know, it may be necessary to split the church. And that truly just broke my heart. I, it just wasn't going to happen. It can't happen. And uh, we're all here together. And this church is not two separate churches and everything like that. No? Okay? God is good. And, you know, if you have patience and love, things are going to get done. Period. You don't even have to do nothing but sit back and bask in God's love. Because what he'll do is he'll place a standard around you. Some people say like, well, you know, you just let people do things to you and this and that. I'm heaping coals on their heads. What's, what's happening is God is allowing me to be the vessel to be able to display his power with, with love. Okay, I've gotten out of some of the craziest things because he loves me. Uh, he knows that I'm just as crazy as a bat, okay? But I, I, I love everyone and all of the things that I try to do for the community here. Yeah. Here's uh, some, uh, some, some scriptures uh, about God's love, okay? So, you know, we shouldn't talk about love in the Bible without uh, covering uh, God's love for each one of us. This is the love that has led us to the path for eternal salvation. Can we praise God on that? Amen. Plenty of scriptures take to love, y'all. Okay, because God is love. All of this stuff is love. If we love one another, all of the rest of the commandments will be fulfilled. It's just that simple. 
You wouldn't be doing anything to anyone if you loved them. Okay? This planet is absolute. Well, see what it is. The enemy knows how powerful love is, and he will use all types of trickery and all types of 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 of, of ways of of taking something as simple and wonderful as love and turning it into a, a, well, watering it down and turning it into something that people uh, get offended when you when you use. It. Some people will get outright offended when you when you say you love. And so well. You don't know me like that. Who gives you, you know, who, who you think? God Almighty. Woo! Yeah. He's good at what he does, okay? Satan is good at what he does, confusing us, pitting us against each other, just throwing up all kinds of roadblocks. But we got something for him, and that's the unity and love that we have for one another. Let me keep moving on. Uh, how am I doing for time? Because I'm ready to get up off of here already. I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got half an hour. How am I doing so far, guys? Am I, am I doing okay? Right. Okay, all right now. <laughs> Lord, was, yeah, uh, Helen and I was like, you know, she said, yeah, do some scripture. Don't just, you know, just talk about myself. Because we do it. We do a lot of that around here, just talking in the spiritual hour, Bible, and all that kind of stuff. But I'm going straight to scripture today on us, okay? We're going to start with John 3 and 16. So I've got to put my little assistance on here. Are you there? Can you see? <laughs> now, we, we, now, we all know this one, but I'm going, to, I'm going to share it with us again. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Good God Almighty. What a statement. What a you know, all right. Uh, he, he you know he loved us so much until he gave his only only son. And uh, that that in itself is a is is a wonderful foundation to have the creator extend his love a like that. Okay, who, who are we? We're not deserving of it. Let's move right along. We're going to go to Romans 5, the eighth chapter. But God showed his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Just, I mean, it's, it's incredible the economy of words that the Lord uses in certain parts of the scripture that just covers everything, okay? I mean, you just think about the Lord's Prayer and how it's broken down and all that, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a foundation, it's a guideline for, for praying. But to, we'll, we'll move right on. And then we're at uh, Romans 8, 37 through 39. Amen, amen. Know in all things, we are more than conquerors, say, through him who loves us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor heights, nor depth, nor anything else in our creation will be able to separate us from the love God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. What a statement. Amen. Okay, I mean, all I'm doing is Amen. just allowing you to hear me quote this scripture. Okay, I'm done with all of the pontificating about myself and me. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just share scripture with you uh, on, on, on about how powerful and how necessary it is for us to get this love piece down. Okay. We get this love piece down. We can we can we can get rid of the racial reconciliation mission group because we ain't gonna be acting a fool and we ain't gonna be treating each other unkind. Okay, so if you get the foundation set up right, you ain't got to worry about nothing else collapsing and falling out or down around you. And love is very important. Love is the thing that we need to work on most because uh, I felt loved when I came here, but it's. Ooh, it's kind of hard to explain. It's, we'll leave that alone because I'm not, you know, because I'm not prepared for it. Uh, we're gonna go I right along. <laughs> what you say? Ma? 
I think you all. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Galatians 2 and 20. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Okay, I mean, this is just agape love throughout everything. It's just sacrifice and just, just all over everywhere. You just giving yourself to your, your loved ones and to your community. What a, what, a, what a wonderful, what a wonderful thing. If we're all able to learn how to do it and do it without any reservations. Okay, I mean, okay, I mean, I don't have to like you, but God says I must love you. Okay, all right. I don't have to like you, but I, I must love you. And I must have the agape love. That is to try to get to find out what is wrong between us. Why don't you like me? Or why don't I like you? Or why do we uh, rub each other the wrong way? What can I do to allow you to, to, to love me? God of mine. Uh, we're going to move right along. First uh, John 3 and 1. See what kind of love the Father has given to us that we should be called children of God. And so we are. The reason why the world does not know us <coughs> is that it did not know him. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. A couple more and I'm out of here. Here's some, uh, uh, some Bible verses about loving one another. Okay? The other one's about how Jesus and God, they set this thing up to where uh, we, we got it like that and don't even deserve it. Okay? We are children of God and the best of us in all the righteous things that we try to do with all of our missions and all of these things is, is filthy rags. So please keep a check on who you are and what you are. You are a wretched sinner. Okay? The best of us. Do we understand? Does everybody understand me on this? You're a sinner. You're a sinner. You are a wretched sinner. Okay? And the, 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 the sooner you get that in your head, the better off you'll be. Because God will allow you to be molded and worked on. Once you think you like that, it's, it's, it's over. These are uh, love one another verses in the Bible, and I'm going to be out of here in just a second. Uh, Romans 13 and 8. All right, now this, is, now this is off the chain, guys. Oh, no one anything except to love one another, for the one who loves another has feel, fulfilled the law. Did you hear that? Okay. You can't even, okay. You're not supposed to, oh, read it again. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, as in like uh, money. Oh, no one anything except to love each other. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. Okay. So basically, uh, with, with that love credit card, uh, you just, you just, it just doesn't have any limit, okay? You just keep doing it, and you're doing it, and you're doing it, and you're doing it, and you do it, and you do it, and you do it, and you do it, do it, okay? All right? I mean, love, I mean, you're not supposed to owe anyone anything. Scripture says uh, you're not really supposed to owe, owe anyone except love. You will always be indebted to one another with the love that you have, that you can give to them. If it's anything other than that, and if the credit card is not completely uh, open, wide open, and ready to be used and charged at any time, you're not fulfilling God's law. You're, you're not. Yes. That's, yeah, I mean, what, that's what makes God such a, an, an awesome God. The guy, he's got everything, and he can do everything, but he sits 
And through his son Jesus, he asks you to come to him. He made you. He can make you come to him. He can make you do anything he wants. But he gives us free choice. He gives us the, the ability to make decisions. He gives us the, 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 the Holy Spirit to uh, allow us to, to know what we're doing wrong. Okay? Let's move on. Let's move on. Lord have mercy because I can get uh, busy here. Uh, Galatians 5 and uh, uh, the, the, the 13th chapter. For you were called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love you must serve one another. You got to good God. Ooh. Okay. We're free now from a lot of the things that has uh, that, that has held us down. I know I'm working on some things uh, too, but that, you know we can't use that as an opportunity. To, to get on up and, and do something else. Okay, I done got mine, you get yours type of thing. No, it's, it's not like that. With that freedom, we are to serve and love one another. I am just sweating. Ugh. Am I on point, guys? Am I, am I doing okay? All right, all right. Are you, are you understand? Because you say I sometimes think it's hard, I'm, hard, I'm hard to follow. Uh -huh. Then you also. <laughs> Thank you, man. See, I wasn't gonna cry. Okay. <laughs> okay. Ephesians four and the second chapter. With all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love. Okay. Look how simple. Look how simple that is, okay? It doesn't take rocket science. It doesn't take philosophy classes. Let me read it again, guys. With all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love. Thank you, guys, for bearing with me. I mean, I'm okay, I don't know, but uh, I think I have some challenging times that uh, I know you guys probably have to lift me up in prayer on. I, I can't think of too many things because I try to do the right thing, but truly I'm a sinner and a good one at that. Come on now. Y'all think I'm nice and everything. And, oh, Mike Smith's all night cheap. Baby, you just don't know. Okay? I can get stupid. Okay? Trust me. Okay? Trust me. I can get real stupid. Okay? I mean, I was a musician for the first, you know, 20 years of my life. So you know what musicians do. We get drunk and we do things and we party, okay? That's why I'm afraid of any type of situation that will draw me from my music into a secular type of, 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 of situation. I've had several offers from people to help come up and do, you know, secular music. Trouble, okay? All right? You, you'll be missing me more Sundays, okay? All right? You gotta pray for me now. First Peter, chapter one and the twenty-second verse. Having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, for a sincere brotherly love, love one another earnestly from a pure heart. That's a that, that's a that's a that's a good one too. I mean, I'm telling you, Lord have mercy. Let me read it again. Having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, got to obey the truth for a sincere brotherly love. Love one another earnestly from a pure heart. Lord have mercy, Jesus. Last one, guys. And I'm out of here. First John 4 and 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. I'm going to kind of 
Um, took this mic of you know, to sit here and just share a, a, a little bit about my challenges in this community. But see, I chose. I chose to be here. I knew it was going to be tough, and it's still tough right now. But the thing that has given me the most comfort, I am starting to feel the love from the, the individuals in this community. And I can't go anywhere. Uh, I mean, when I was with the African church, I kind of missed Old Eighth Day. Even though we were doing our African, do -do 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 and it was just right up my alley, and we were doing, I kind of missed, uh, you know, Connie's sometimes corny songs. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna be straight, okay? I'm gonna be straight with you. I mean, I'm getting used to it, I'm playing them. I, you know, the drums are kind of putting some spice on, on, on some of the things that, that we, but uh, the, the music is not my type of music. And uh, I'm serious about if in fact we're gonna become a multi-racial and multicultural church, we may need to look into purposely altering how we worship maybe once a month or something, just like we have the potluck. Well, maybe once a month we can have a, 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 a service done in, in, in all Spanish with a translator, with Spanish Christian music. Same thing with, with the African American type of stuff. I mean, you can t we can talk it all day long, but until you actually put it into action, it's not gonna mean anything, okay? So, so we, we are a multicultural racial church. I, but if we, if we don't change any of the old eighth day you know, not, not permanently change it, but allow for the diversities. And, and, and make it a, yeah, make it a purposeful thing, okay? I mean, we can talk all we want to, but we need to do some things to where like, if it's just one Sunday a month, it's like an African-American type of service with, with Karen singing and we, and we just, know, hey, they may just come once a month, but we got that soul for once a month, okay? They may not come to any of the other services, but they will know that uh, this is the third Sunday, I can go to eighth day and I can get me some praise on. Oh, I love you guys.